Okay, this is our basic induction motor overview. Um, this is a squirrel cage type induction motor. Basically induction, it opposes change, it induces an EMF in a conductor by cutting lines of force. Uh, it's your magnetic field. So basically, this creates a magnetic field. It cuts through these conductors and induces a current flow. Uh, the basic parts, this is just a single phase motor. We're not storing the start circuits. A three-phase motor has a naturally occurring rotating field. So you have your windings carry electrical current. You have an iron core. Uh, this is a laminated, usually silicon iron. You want something that has a high permeability for your magnetic flux, yet has resistance to your electrical current. These laminations are insulated. Otherwise, you'd have eddy currents in here. Circulating currents produce a lot of heat and waste power. So you don't want this to conduct electricity. We want to conduct a magnetic field across very efficiently. Um, as the windings produce a magnetic field, your cores will concentrate it or direct it towards the rotor. So you have a magnetic field. This will be south and north in this, this example. The magnetic field cuts across the conductor and produces an EMF. In order to produce electromotive force or voltage, you have to have movement. In this case, we're changing the lines of force are getting stronger than the reversing direction. So this is causing a current flow. You could have a magnetic field just to north and south and spin this and produce electricity. But if it just stays still, you won't produce electricity. So as this goes from positive to negative, uh, 60 times a second, it'll produce a magnetic field. This one here, just a 60 cycle current supply. It goes from north to south to north 60 times a second. So that means this will rotate 60 times a second. This field will rotate around or 3,600 times a minute. This is just based on the 60 cycle. As this current is produced in here, I produce a magnetic field. Your core concentrates it. Uh, these lines of force cut across these conductors and produces an EMF electromotive force, which causes a current to flow. It's just kind of a shorter rotor, so you get high current flow across here. This current flow will create a magnetic field just like this one did, except this is an opposite direction. You have your north pole here and a south pole here. They try to stay together. So the magnetic field is really pretty intense on some of these motors just trying to pull it around and push it. So this magnetic field from here comes back across these windings and it'll produce its own uh, current flow, except it's an opposite direction. So this will oppose the current coming in so when you first start a motor, uh, it's based on the winding resistance and a little bit of inductance. So you have very high starting currents. As this comes up to speed, you start developing counter EMF and it starts opposing the inrush current flow. At full load speed, this will never run 3600 because it has to run a little bit slower to allow current to come in. You have to have your magnetizing current uh, produced. So as you load up a motor, the rotor will slow down EMF will drop and more current will flow through, produce a stronger magnetic field, and they'll give you more torque in the motor. Okay, so part of the magnetic field. Uh, mag magnets go from north to south. They form lines of force. Um, these like to go through a permeable material like iron. They'll also go through air. Um, lines of force flux. Reversal of the magnetic field causes heating, hysteresis. So as this magnetic field changes, there's opposition to change, uh, creates friction in the iron basically and creates heat. Each material has a lines of force saturation limit. This is really important on transformers, generators. You'll have a trip at high voltage and low frequency. This will oversaturate the core. Uh, once your core is oversaturated, the lines of force have to go outside this. They can no longer go through here. It's saturated. So they'll start going through the iron frames, uh, create a lot of heating and problems. So that's why most of your electrical grid is set to trip at a certain frequency, it's about 58.2 or so. Uh, lines of force make a loop, kind of a primitive drawing of our rotor. We have our stator. Uh, magnetic fields produced this way, it goes through the rotor back around. And then this creates the reverse magnetic field that comes through here, back through the rotor. So they oppose each other in the winding. Um, counter EMF, electromotive force, 
current creating the opposite direction from the power line current limits input current. Um, current produced from the ro rotating magnetic field moving across the stator windings. Kind of a simple drawing here. You got the current produced from the rotor pushing this way, and the power, it's limited the amount of power comes in. It actually takes place in here. Just kind of a simple way of thinking of it. Rotor slip. Uh, this is the key to these motors. It's the difference between the synchronous speed and the motor shaft speed. Uh, the field here wants to run 3600. Induction motor cannot run at 3600. You have to run a little bit less to provide the magnetizing current in here. Now a synchronous motor, it will run 3600, but that's a little different design. Okay, your rotor slip, it is required to produce a current flow in the rotor. A loaded motor slows down. More lines of force from the magnetic field are cut. This produces larger rotor current, which increases magnetic field. Hence, you have more torque output. This slows down your rotor. Uh, there's more lines of less lines of less EMF are being produced. These this thing will keep producing a field across. These bars are all tied together. Uh, motor current when you first start depends on winding resistance. As motor comes up to speed, counter electromotive force is developed, which opposes the inflow of current. As motor is loaded, less EMF is generated, higher current flow. That's why large motors, you cannot do repeated starts. There's a lot of heat developed by the inrush current. Um, big motors maybe get three starts an hour. Any motor, if you're starting at uh, excessive amounts, it will develop a tremendous amount of heat in here, and you can burn up the insulation in the windings. Uh, there's one thing with this, you got your right hand rule. If you lay your hand on a winding, current's flowing this way around it, this will be your north pole. There's a lot of different hand rules with generators and motors and stuff. So it doesn't matter how it's wound, it's, it's the direction of current that really depends on this because you can come across this way and then wind it back. The current flow determines the magnetic fields. <clears throat> Here's just some basic uh, magnetism, electrical properties. Here's a real handy formula. The motor speed, you take 7200 divided by the poles. This is a two pole motor. I'm um, divided by 72, will give you 3600 RPM. The number of poles, you take 7200 divided by the speed. This is running 3600 divided by 7200, give you two poles. Uh, if you're over in Europe, other place have a 50 Hertz system. It's going to behave different. Also, your trans your windings and your cores are going to be built different to handle the 50 cycle instead of the 60. I believe they'll be a little bit heavier duty to carry the flux. 60 hertz, you can carry more flux for the density. 50 hertz, you have to have more area for the magnetic flux. You can equate electricity to water. It's kind of a handy way to think of things. Kind of primitive, but it's a, gives you kind of a, good idea. Voltage it's equal to the pressure. Uh, electrical units measures in volts. So if you have a hose that has 10 psi that'd be like low voltage. It does low work. If you have a 500 psi hose you have a lot more pressure. Same thing with volts. It can move a lot more material. Current is equal to the flow. It's measured in amps in electricity. So if you have a hose that has five gallons a minute, uh, you can't do a whole lot of work. If you have a hundred gallons a minute, you can do a lot more work with the flow. The resistance is equal to friction or valves measured in ohms. Just like here, you'll get heating in here because of friction of the magnetic fields and the electrical. I don't know if friction is a good word, but that's what you can think of it as. It's being opposed and is producing heat. And that heat is a wasted energy that can't be used for work. On an inductive motor, this produces a lagging power factor. That means the current legs the voltage. When you first start, you could be down to a 0.2, which means your current is way behind the voltage. When it's loaded, it can go to a 0.85 to 0.90 full load. Uh, this is the magnetizing current. This is just kind of the cost of running a distribution grid. All your transformers have a magnetizing current. This power factor has to be made up so in the generating station, you either have to buck or boost to try and get this power factor back to unity. 
which means you're trying to drive this back to a 0.99 or a 1. So this is power that's being produced that really isn't being used for work. It's just, to, it's just the cost of doing business running a system. Somebody has to pay for that power that's being used. So a lot of times industrial users, they'll try and get their power factor more to unity. So they don't have to pay the extra money to compensate for the power factor. A magnetic field, it produces a current flow in a wire with movement, either physical movement, move the wire, or changing magnetic fields. Uh, this here, the current flowing through a wire will produce a circular magnetic field around it. Now, if you want to produce electricity, you can put a magnet on a wire, nothing will happen. You move the magnet, you get a, an electrical potential across there, which is measured in volts, and then current will flow. Or you can also have a changing magnetic field. You can have your flux build up, current will flow, then when it starts dropping down, it goes the other way. So it's kind of a really strange concept how you can convert electricity to magnetic fields and magnetic fields to electricity. I'm not so sure it's totally understood, but we have some different rules and formulas for working with it and making it work. The motors, you have inrush current, that's the starting current. FLA, full of load amps. This is the maximum run current from the motor. This is the current at the rate of horsepower the motor will pull. You don't want to exceed this as you start producing too much heating in your hair. You'll start burning up insulation, um, causing problems to the motor. Break down insulation if it gets too hot, you'll limit the runtime on it. Some magnetic terms reluctance. It's resistance to the magnetic flux and permeability. This conducts magnetic flux. So anytime you have an air gap, you have reluctance. Um, your cores have permeability. This is kind of for the magnetic cir circuit, how much of an air gap you have. The tighter this is, the less reluctance. Um, but that's fair to the magnetic circuit on the motor design. 